SCP-7686. R is for reshape. People wish to change their appearance for all sorts of reasons, from personal satisfaction, to attracting a mate, to health. Sometimes these changes are pretty minor, such as fashion or makeup, while other times it's more drastic, including weight loss and surgery. SCP-7686 is perhaps the most drastic appearance changing product of all, capable of radically changing how a person looks in ways that no normal substance or process could. With it, we're given a specific story about its use, with an individual wanting to change her appearance for a rather unique and tragic reason. Let's begin. SCP-7686 is a widely circulated and poorly understood chemical substance found all across the continental United States, colloquially known as reshape. When taken in small doses, this substance is capable of changing the form of the user's body according to their desires, usually over a long period of time. The substance's side effects when ingested normally include fevers, severe body-wide pain, and chills. When an individual overdoses on it, the side effects can include seizures, dramatic involuntary changes in body structure or skin pigment, sudden bone collapse, and partial or total body liquefaction. Though not addictive, the substance's effects can only be maintained over long periods of use and in escalating doses. This has led to several notable instances of abuse, the most prominent being the discovery of 7686-A, the only current case of extreme abuse of the 7686 substance. 7686-A is an organism consisting of the bodies of Dr. Jared Jameson and his daughter Lydia being conjoined together. At present, the condition of Dr. Jameson has blocked much of his face, including his mouth and left eye, with respiration only possible through his nose, which has also been partially obstructed. Aside from his head, he is conjoined to Lydia through both of his arms and his lower body in a manner that can be construed similar to an embrace. Additionally, due to the nature of their fusion, the entirety of Lydia's face has been subsumed into her father's neck and shoulder area. Thus, she is incapable of independent respiration and digestion, forcing her into a parasitic relationship with Dr. Jameson. Likewise, nearly 50% of her brain has been subsumed into his body, leading the Foundation to conclude that Lydia is currently brain dead, while Dr. Jameson is in a permanent, vegetative state. We're next given a series of logs transcribing the contents of a digitized photo album found in Lydia's cloud-based drive. The first album, titled First Birthday Scanned Pics, features a number of images depicting several individuals, including an approximately 25-year-old Dr. Jameson celebrating Lydia's first birthday. Each individual is shown to be enjoying the proceedings, with Lydia always shown to be carried by her father. Despite the image's candid nature, several pictures feature Jameson looking at the camera and speaking, with this being particularly obvious in places where he is being photographed by a variety of other persons from a similar angle. The second folder is titled Scanned Picks Family Stuff and features a variety of subjects in a domestic, upper middle class setting. Each image depicts Dr. Jameson and Lydia taken from the perspective of an unknown person with Lydia being estimated to be around two to five years old. The images include Lydia being given a bath by Dr. Jameson, her being guided to walk, and crying as Dr. Jameson rushes to her with a milk bottle in hand. Her sleeping in a crib and Lydia at age three in a booster seat on her way to her first day of school, as well as her holding a certificate displaying her high grades. Other images include her at five years old at a recognition ceremony being awarded with several merits, her first day of first grade, her winning a statewide quiz contest, earning $2,000, and her winning a statewide spelling bee, winning $4,000.
It's also noted that one image was deleted from the first birthday folder a week and a half after it was uploaded, consisting of a torn picture showing what appears to be a woman holding Lydia. Another image, not organized into any of the folders, entitled Love You Too Dad.jpg, features Dr. Jameson and Lydia at around 11 years old. The two are side by side and smiling, although Dr. Jameson appears to look tired, and it's noted that they seem to share many physical traits, more so than usual for typical parent-child likenesses. This is apparent in Lydia's brown hair and round face shape. The image is a selfie, with an old decrepit house seen in the background, and Lydia is ecstatically holding a letter displaying her invitation to go on the popular trivia game show The Brightest featuring the most academically accomplished students across the country, typically competing for $500,000. The words, She could take everything I have, but I only ever fought to keep you, are written in black marker on the photo. There's also a family videos folder, so we're given a log of the transcriptions of each, starting with one titled, Dad 39th Birthday Surprise. The video begins with a nine-year-old Lydia pointing the camera through a crack in the door of a small and dark interior space, likely a closet. Through the crack, a small door can be seen, inferred to be leading outside, and the room leading out of the small interior space is dimly lit by a flickering fluorescent lamp. A bare dining table with cheap plastic chairs is seen in the center of the room. Lydia is heard audibly tapping the surface of the phone camera, and the camera switches to capture her instead, where she's seen to be smiling widely. She excitedly says that she knows her dad didn't want anything for his birthday, but she didn't want him to feel left out. She's then seen straining her neck to look through a crack in the door, before looking back to the camera and smiling. She says that she knows that he's preparing something for her on Saturday, so she wanted to give him something too. Footsteps are then heard outside, so Lydia stops talking and lowers the phone. A door is heard opening, so Lydia hurriedly picks the phone up and switches the camera's perspective again. Through the video, Dr. Jameson can be seen opening the door to the house and walking in. His clothes, which consist of a cheap suit and tie, are ruffled and disheveled, with his hunched demeanor conveying exhaustion. He tiredly calls out to Lydia, who's heard on the video quietly giggling to herself, and he removes his small backpack and places it on the floor, as well as his suit. He calls out to Lydia again and walks away from the closet. Lydia giggles again and steps out of the closet, quietly placing a small cupcake with a small burnt-out candle on the table. Dr. Jameson comes back into the room with an angry expression, which softens when he sees the cupcake and shifts from worry to joy as Lydia starts singing Happy Birthday. A smile begins to form on his face, and he audibly sniffles as she finishes, before slowly tearing up. Lydia taps on her phone again, and the song Butterfly Kisses by Bob Carlyle begins being played. Dr. Jameson slowly walks in the direction of the table, picking up the cupcake and blowing out the candle. He's still heard sniffling as the two hug, and tells her that he had a bad day at work, so she has no idea how much this means to him. He then says that he told her that they'd make it, even without her mom. The two stay silent for a few seconds, before he says that they should eat the cake, as she has that show tomorrow, and he wants her to go to bed with a full stomach so that she can think properly. Lydia picks her phone up again, and tears are shown to be running down her eyes, which she wipes away. Dr. Jameson then tells her that he's proud of her, no matter what, to which she audibly sighs and smiles. She asks him even if she doesn't get the money, and Dr. Jameson is silent for several seconds, before telling her to win for him, and that he'll be believing in her every step of the way. He says to not think about the money, just think about winning. New tears begin to run down her cheeks before she wipes them away again, and says that she'll make sure to buy him a bigger cake when she wins. The next video is titled Game Show, with two students seated at a table on a stage in a studio setting, a panel of judges facing them, and at least 200 people surrounding them. 
A host, identified as prominent game show host Lawrence Manzano, enters the stage in a gray suit, microphone in hand. He says that they have held numerous eliminations over the last few days, with 50 students entering and only one leaving. He then pulls out some cue cards and introduces their last two participants, the first being a girl named Rena Tan, and the second being Lydia Jameson. The crowd claps for each, but the camera begins to shake more violently for Lydia as Dr. Jameson cheers loudly. Manzano explains that they'll be entering the final elimination and proceeds to explain the rules of the contest. As he speaks, the words battery low begin to flicker at the top right of the camera as Dr. Jameson swears and stops the recording. Another video file from 15 minutes later shows a slightly different view of the stage as Dr. Jameson has changed position. Lydia and Rena are still seated at the table, and the score shows Rena as being three points ahead of Lydia. Manzano announces the final question of the contest, which will allow Lydia to win if she answers correctly, and the camera zooms in on Lydia's face, showing her to be clearly tense. The question is, what is the point on the Earth that is directly 180 degrees opposite of the zenith? There is an extremely tense silence in the gymnasium, and Lydia is seen with her eyes wide, her face covered with sweat. Several seconds of silence continue as both contestants think of an answer, and Manzano repeats the question. Thirty more seconds of silence go by, before Rena hesitantly raises her hand and begins to answer the horizon, but stops and lowers her hand. Lydia then stands, attempting to project confidence, and answers a horizon, unsure of her choice. A negative tone is played over the speakers, and she shrinks slightly. Rena then stands and clears her throat, answering a nadir at which point a positive sound plays over the speakers and the crowd applauds. Rena is declared the winner, and the camera zooms in on Lydia's face, showing her to be close to crying. As Rena gets her medal and check, Lydia proceeds backstage in a defeated manner. The camera begins to shake as Dr. Jameson lowers it, and a sniffle is heard. He begins running, and he's heard saying that he can't do this anymore and he's done holding it together. He meets up with Lydia, and immediately tells her that she had one damn job, and they needed that money to get back on their feet again. He trusted her, and works like a dog six days a week, and this is how she repays him. Lydia tries to apologize, and says that she'll do something to repay him, but he tells her no, there's nothing she can do, and she's a disappointment. After a pause, Lydia says that he promised that he'd always be proud of her, and asks if he's still proud of her. After another pause, Dr. Jameson says that she's grounded, before exploding and swearing that she's grounded with no phones, no going out at all, and she'll study until she fixes this. After a period of 30 seconds of silence, a sniffle is heard, and Dr. Jameson quietly says that she's beginning to look like her mother. Lydia sobs and pleads with her dad, but he just tells her to get back to the car. The video continues to run for several minutes as Jameson forgot about it, and Lydia continues to desperately try to get her father's attention, although he remains silent. Eventually, the battery dies, and the video ends. We're next given a summary of selected contents from the archived files folder on the cloud, organized by year. From the same year as the competition, there are a number of selfies taken by Lydia at various locations, including her middle school, her home, although Dr. Jameson is not seen in the photos taken after the date of the competition, a local McDonald's, with the photos usually taken after school hours, the residences of other students, and the Channel 9 studio, where the game show was filmed. In addition to the selfies, a vast majority of the images taken after the date of the game show depict contents of an academic nature, usually notes, excerpts from textbooks, and assignments. Additionally, the results of each of her tests during the year have been photographed, with most of them showing perfect scores, although those that are not show evidence of water drop damage on the paper. 
There's also a notable interruption in uploads starting from the date of the game show until a couple of weeks later, although the reason for this is unknown. The following year, the uploads remain consistent until February 3rd, when they stop completely until June 26th, corresponding with the beginning of the school spring term and the end of the school year. After June 26th, the uploads resume, although the photos taken are only limited to that of the local library, the school, and that of the Jameson residence. Selfies from this period are notably absent, with the pictures being purely of an academic nature, and Lydia was known during this period to only frequent the three mentioned locations. On September 15th, Lydia took pictures of a small cake with the numbers 1 and 2 displayed above it, along with pictures of a taller and more matured Lydia beside a fatigued and unsmiling Dr. Jameson. Notably, Lydia appears to resemble Dr. Jameson far less, with her hair darkening to a dark brown and her face becoming more angular. The only other images from this day are of a slight variation to this, which shows Dr. Jameson looking at Lydia with a hateful expression. On December 24th, Lydia's non-academic uploads increased, with photos including Lydia with several friends from school showing them talking and laughing. Notably, one of the pictures depicts one friend, later identified to be 13-year-old Jasper Beecham, injecting a substance into his arm in the background. This was later confirmed to be the first appearance of SCP-7686 in Lydia's files. After December 24th, further output from her phone ceases until February 19th. After this, pictures of normal academic content resumes, although unusual content begins to be uploaded as Lydia begins to take pictures of herself in the mirror every day until June 28th. These new pictures are taken at the start of every day, usually at 7.30 a.m., and depict Lydia standing perfectly straight while holding her phone. Screenshots also begin to be uploaded of Lydia making contact with Jasper over text messages, usually concerning matters of money. Notably, on February 20th, Lydia's hair, which had darkened to almost black the day before, had begun to slowly lighten. Similar and subtle changes can also be seen on Lydia's cheeks, chin, and nose, which continues for several months, and by May 30th, Lydia's appearance has completely changed to once again resemble Dr. Jameson. Due to the gradual nature of the changes, it's assumed that they were thought by people surrounding her to have been a result of puberty. Unlike previous years, there are no periods of time where uploads from her phone cease, and further images of Dr. Jameson show him in a happier disposition, with the two even traveling together to a local park. Both Lydia and Dr. Jameson are seen laughing in the pictures taken of them on this day. On June 5th, further correspondence with Jasper ceases, which coincides with his sudden disappearance in relation to his juvenile delinquency cases, and he still has yet to be found. The following day, Lydia's appearance changes begin to revert, and by June 8th, her hair has completely darkened to black, with her face shape becoming sharper and more angular. Daily pictures cease at this time, and on June 9th, Lydia disappears. It's assumed that she is attempting to look for Jasper during this period, with pictures from the time being uploaded later upon her return, depicting the forest surrounding their town. By 7.30pm, Lydia uses the flash of her smartphone to take pictures in order to illuminate her surroundings. At 7.40, a picture of a remote wooden cabin is taken, and shortly after, a video is recorded. The video shows the wooden floor of a cabin, with one glass bottle containing a clear liquid placed off to the side. Heavy breathing is heard, presumably coming from the holder of the phone, and their fingers cross over the field of view of the camera multiple times as they attempt to presumably hold it properly. After several seconds of fidgeting with the camera, the phone is held up to show Lydia, panting with exhaustion. A plank of wood is held in her hand in a guarded stance, and her cheek is bleeding from a freshly made scratch. Her clothes are disheveled, with her shirt being torn in several places and dirt caking her face. Her hair, meanwhile, shows a rapid change from a bright brown color on the edges to a pitch black color closer to her scalp. 
She grits her teeth as she realizes the camera is pointed at her, and her expression is desperate. She tells Jasper to just give her some of it, as she needs it and she doesn't have much time. Jasper asks her what she needs it for, as she attacked him out of nowhere, and what she doesn't have time for. Lydia stays silent, her lip quivering as she takes several deep breaths. Jasper says that he has her phone now, and has this video, so the moment he sends it to the police, she won't have anything to hide behind. Lydia's expression changes to barely held in anger, and she begins to quiver, telling him that she needs it to maintain her face. Jasper's breathing begins to slow as well, and he takes a step back, telling her that he doesn't care and she should leave. She continues to plead with him, but he yells at her to shut up, and says that he doesn't know what was going through her mind seeking him out like this and trying to knock him out. He's trying to get away, and he's not giving her anything, not after she attacked him like that. He doesn't care for her sob story, as he cut her in on a deal and now that deal's done. Lydia steps forward, tears running down her cheeks, and Jasper steps back. She sobs and pleads with him again, before wincing in pain, dropping the plank and cradling her head. She screams out in pain, and Jasper remarks that she's reverting. She screams out in pain again, much louder, before suddenly stopping and staying in place. Jasper calls out to her, and she slowly removes her hands from her face, looking up at him. Her cheeks are far sharper now, and her hair is completely black, causing Jasper to remark that she looks different. Lydia's expression changes from worry to horror. She mentions her dad, and pleads with Jasper again for him to give it to her, at which point he realizes that she's doing this for her dad, and asks what the hell he's done for her. She stares at him, tears falling down her cheeks, and says that he loves her. Jasper replies that he treats her like a prisoner, and locked her up at home for days after she hung out with him last Christmas. He takes a deep breath, and tells her that her father doesn't love her. She continues to stare back, and starts to sob, wiping the tears away, and says that she just wants him to hug her, and to see her as his little girl again. Quickly, she bends over to take a bottle from the floor, and wordlessly turns around to walk out. Jasper yells for her to wait, and drops the phone as he rushes towards her. She tells him to please let her go, but he pleads that it's all he has left and he needs it for himself. She yells again for him to let her go, and a loud noise is heard as a person presumably staggers backward, followed by a dull thud. Seconds later, a heavier thud is heard. Lydia hesitantly approaches and apologizes as Jasper quietly grunts. She tells him that she'll come back for him, and after she gets home, she'll call an ambulance. She then picks up the phone and stops the recording. She soon returns home, and then records a video in her bathroom. She's sitting down on the floor, panting, and a large bottle that is partially full with SCP-7686 is in her left hand, while a disposable syringe is seen on her right. She touches the wound on her cheek and sighs, saying that she really messed up, and she doesn't even know if it'll work, as she might just OD and die right here. She's trying to hold back tears, and says that she tried so hard to get him to forgive her, as she knows that she wasn't able to get them the money. She knows that she couldn't do anything else, that she was such a disappointment. She knows that he worked so hard just to keep them alive, and that after he was blacklisted, he kept working from 5 to 8 just for them. She knows that that's why he kept taking her phone away from her, why he grounded her when her grades were low, and why he kept sending her to the library even when there wasn't school. She endured all of that because she knew he was doing it for a reason, because she was a failure and a disappointment. She knows the way he looked at her, the sheer hate, and she understood why. She just didn't want him to come home today and see mom waiting for him at the dining table again, as he deserves better than that. She stays silent for several seconds, looking listlessly away from the camera. She says that no matter what happens, she loves him and forgives him, understanding everything that he did. 
she's doing all of this for him and hopes that he forgives her too. She proceeds to extract 7686 from the bottle and begins injecting it into her arm, wincing as she does so. Wordlessly, she continues to extract the liquid from the bottle and inject it into her arm, each time evidently tensing more and more as sweat forms on her forehead. As she extracts the last of it, she is seen taking a deep breath and looks directly at the camera, eyes full of tears. She says she's so sorry and attempts to stand up, but as she does so, her leg bone snaps from underneath her and she screams loudly in pain. She proceeds to seize violently on the ground, her limbs hitting the floor and wall multiple times as her eyes roll into the back of her head. After 30 seconds of seizing, her arm again makes hard contact with the nearby wall, and it folds in upon itself immediately, signaling a weakening of her arm bones. The color of her skin changes from pale to pitch black in several places before immediately changing back, and she begins to scream. After a minute, hurried footsteps are heard outside, and the door opens. Dr. Jameson is heard cursing, and he kneels down, trying to put both of his arms around Lydia and yelling at her what's happening. She attempts to speak, but is unable to, as the flesh inside of her mouth presumably begins to liquefy. Under his arms, her flesh is seen liquefying, and the resulting fluid is presumably a mixture of liquefied flesh, muscle, and blood taking on a pink coloration. Her limbs no longer seem to have solid bones, and her hair has been bleached white. Dr. Jameson's demeanor suddenly shifts as he begins to sob, and Lydia stops seizing, with only a quiet gurgling heard. She faintly speaks, and apologizes to her dad, before gurgling once again. She's heard attempting to vocalize, but is unable to, and at this point it's presumed that her throat has been obstructed by liquefied flesh. Dr. Jameson, however, says no, as his expression turns from regret to anger, and he raises his voice. He tells her that she can't do this to him, not after all he sacrificed and everything he did to keep her from her mother. He attempts to shake her, but her body is almost completely liquefied, and yells at her to stop as he begins to cry. His body begins to shake violently as he does so, and she ceases to vocalize. He then screams loudly, his voice expressing immense amounts of frustration and grief, and a long silence follows. He then leans back against the wall, staring upward, and says that she did this for him. He begins to weep, and begs her to answer him. Eventually, he looks at his arms, seeing that they have completely fused with Lydia's torso, and he appears unable to process the current events. He says that it's taken such a long time, but he's sorry for everything. As she continues to liquefy further, Dr. Jameson attempts to embrace her. Her liquefied flesh begins to bond and fuse with his skin as he apologizes again and closes his eyes. SCP-7686-A 7686 is formed as Lydia Jameson solidifies. Due to the loud noises emanating from the Jameson residence, several neighbors attempted to contact 911 for assistance. A Foundation operative working in the call center contacted his superiors at the nearby site, and a containment team was sent to the scene. The following year, unusual brain activity was detected coming from Dr. Jameson, which developed into heightened brain activity, and then active brain activity. He shows no external signs of emerging from his vegetative state, however, so tranquilizers were urgently requested, but are pending approval. The next day, a low murmur was heard coming from 7686-A, continuing for several minutes. The attending researchers report it as being similar to a man talking in his sleep, and the head researcher is notified. Sometime later, Dr. Jameson begins to shake, with the murmurs increasing in volume, and the attending researchers quickly enter and exit the room in search of the head researcher. Dr. Jameson's unobstructed eye then opens, and one of the attending junior researchers tries to open the containment door without the clearance of the head researcher, to no avail. 
Dr. Jameson makes no attempt to free himself from Lydia, and a quiet sobbing and whimpering sound is heard. His heart rate is detected to be elevating dramatically, and a few minutes later he ceases whimpering. At the same time, his heart rate is detected to suddenly be decreasing, and he is seen attempting to move his arms closer around Lydia. The tune to the song Butterfly Kisses by Bob Carlyle is heard being hummed by Dr. Jameson. He loses consciousness soon after, and a few seconds later expires from unknown causes. Gross body horror is obviously pretty horrific, but the events that lead up to it are just as horrible and tragic in a different way. These sorts of circumstances play out every day across the world, disregarding the anomaly, creating vicious cycles. If reshape actually existed in our world, there's no doubt that there would be countless tragedies and horror stories to be told, but this is a rather unique case for it. In the end, Jameson realized where he had gone wrong, and apologized for all of it, but the damage was done. I think there probably are more tragic and frustrating ways that this story could end, but it's certainly tragic and frustrating enough. Lydia ultimately didn't do a good thing, but kids will often try to please their parents, even if they don't deserve it.